Hey guys, you're listening to the Shift Training Podcast. Where we talk about personal growth, we talk about physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health, and just overall well-being. And today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. So this is our 15th episode, and 15. we decided to do something abnormal. So we realized that um, you guys probably don't really know us that well. Or actually, at this point in the game, you probably know us. That's probably why you listen. But for in the future, maybe for those who don't know us so well, um, we'd like to play a little game. We're going to talk a little bit about our own two cents on a few questions. And this is going to be a game from Esther Perel. And with these cards, there's going to be sentences that we're going to complete. And it's going to be random. We're going to pull out a card, draw a card, and then we're going to read it. And then we try to complete the sentence. And this game is called Where Should We Begin? And it's amazing. Like I said, it's, um, it's from Esther Perel. And it's literally uh, a game that you would play with close friends or uh, people you're intimate with, very close mm -hmm. with. So we're going to play that game with you guys because why not? All right, let's do it. All right, Shall we okay. begin? Yeah, yeah, let's begin. All right, and we're going to pull out a random card. We're going to mix it up a little bit. So much pressure right now. All right, and <laughs> choose a car, anything that you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so scared. I'm scared right now. Oh, this one's an easy one. I like this one. What do you got? Read it out loud. For me, money means. Ooh, money means what? Okay, so for me, money means opportunity. It's, uh, I view money as a resource. Having mm -hmm. more resources presents more opportunities or options to build, to create, to do stuff, but also to enjoy nice experiences to share those experiences with others. Mm -hmm. um, so I view money as a, it's a medium, it's exchange. It's, you know, we trade our time for it or mm. things like that, right? I like that. Yeah. So I view it as a means of exchanging life force and converting that into something else. Right, yeah, I like that answer. Where you turn money as an energy, you know? And if you have money, it's much easier to get better at things that you want to get better at, for example, hire a coach if you are into public speaking or you want to get better at basketball or any sports that you want to do if you hire somebody and just pay them money that gives you a lot more uh, benefits and you know instead of having just your own insight you have the insight of someone who's been doing that for 10 years or however long they've been doing it so now all of a sudden you've got mm -hmm. their wealth of knowledge to call upon exactly you shorten that time frame yeah. instead of you just doing it by yourself all right. All right, sweet. Next one, is it my turn? Yeah. All right, let's see it. <laughs> All right, but <clears throat> any of these lovely- Random ones, cars, here we go. <laughs> the person I fear losing the most. Oh. Real vulnerability right now. <laughs> Real vulnerability, <laughs> huh? All right. Um, ah, it's tough. I mean, any family member would definitely give you that feeling of fear because of the memories you build. And um, I think anybody that I'm close with, mm -hmm. and I've never really experienced that part of my, my life yet, mm -hmm. where like I, it, it, it really dies in front of me. You know, I've seen some of my cousin that has passed away, but it was through online and I never seen them like, in the hospital like suffering mm -hmm. i already saw them in in their casket and it made me feel some type of way like wow this is you know we're all gonna go through this and one day it's gonna be me right <laughs> so i tried my best to just bring the present in me to have that quality time as much as possible and as be present as possible nice yeah i want to do that one too okay <clears throat> okay, so the person I fear losing the most, um, this one is super tough, but like you said, I think any family member, anybody that's close to me, anybody that is a regular part of my life, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think um, that's, you know, pretty normal, right? I think more personally for me, I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say my mom. And I'm gonna say my mom because um, I've had lots of challenges. Like usually growing up, 
you tend to have some trauma or issue with a parent, one of your parents, or if you only have one parent, usually that parent. Sometimes you don't, but um, coming from the background that I have, and especially in Black American culture, you tend to have some type of trauma with at least one of your parents, if you have both of them. So my mom is definitely my source of a lot of my trauma wound. I love her. Mm -hmm. We've done a lot to work on our relationship. It's gotten significantly better. Um, but the reason why I have that fear is generally because like in a large capacity, she's the oldest and she's kind of been like the head or leader of the family in a lot of ways. Um, and my aunt also as well. And uh, for me, I'm the eldest. So I kind of take on that type of responsibility. So to have the, I am the actual leader, but I'm supposed to be coming next leader to have her leave. I feel like, uh, it would put me in a position where I don't even know if I'm really, really ready to take on as much as what I've seen her take on. So I fear it selfishly. Um, fear of losing that connection, fear of losing connection with anybody, right? But I also fear what it means for the change in my life and what that would mean um, in being there and trying to still help my family to try to be an anchor point. Wow, thank you for sharing that vulnerability side of you, Coach Law. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank hopefully you. your mom one day uh, could see this. <laughs> yes, I love you very much, Mom. All right, All right. sweet. Cool, next one. We got one more? Yeah. All right, let's we'll do, get this random. We'll we do, can one do one more each. One more each. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 let's do it. We can do maybe the same card, depending which one we want to answer. Oh, yeah, All right, let's, let's see, I'm gonna plot, draw a random card. There we go. Ooh, okay, bet. All right, let's hear it. Important. All right. An important value I draw from my culture. Ooh. An important value important I draw value. from my culture. Uh, this one is interesting for me uh, <clears throat> because if you know me and you know me well, you know that I have beef with my culture. <laughs> I have beef with all cultures, actually. Um, I have beef with, I acknowledge all of the positives or try my best to acknowledge a lot of the positive elements of every culture mm -hmm. that I see. And I also notice what's not so good about each culture and what kind of keeps or limits that particular group of people or whoever subscribes to that culture. So for me, uh, finding an important value I draw from my culture is kind of funny because the way that I live, I live in a way where I take pieces of different cultures and live my life like that, mm. like my own little culture. Uh, but if we're saying from black American culture, the way that I was brought up, um, I would say it's resilience, um, resilience and uh, like Marie Forleo says, is everything's figure outable. So consistently trying to find new ways or new opportunities, new doors. Um, there's not a there's not a part of me that believes that if I don't do the work, it's going to show up. So I value that I already understand that I have to do my part. I have to show up. I must be diligent. I must be resilient. Mm -hmm. I must keep going if I want my piece of this pie. Uh, if I want my best life i have to do my part i think that's what i take uh, the most or draw the most from my culture mm. for me i think my thought on this is probably the the opposite of it like how in asian culture they usually want you to uh cover up your own emotion you know vulnerability means weakness but it's actually the opposite is yeah so when you uh, you know what I'm talking about. If you're Asian, they try to make you feel strong in a way that don't show emotions, you know, always feel tough. And for most people, that's where they break down and confuse us as they get older. Mm. Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's do one more. One more random card. Uh, I don't, all right, I'll choose, one, I'll choose one. I'll choose one. All right, but so... I don't know what we're doing here. These are the cards, by the way. They're amazing. Yeah. They're well designed. I would love to like zoom in and stuff for you, but uh, <laughs> yeah, there are more cards, by the way. They, I just we just picked up like a like handful. This much. Yeah. yeah, there's so many great questions. Or mm -hmm. oh, this one's a good one. Here you go. Mom. Oh snap! <laughs> oh, the person I find most annoying is <laughs> oh dang no. Oh. It's gonna be good. Uh. I think I find a person annoying when they are inconsiderate. Oh, <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah, I have feeling <laughs> of annoyance, <laughs> vengeance, <laughs> and I just like, 
Uh, it, it's just annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. Yeah, um, the person I find most annoying. Yeah, I I agree with that. Um, I don't know, man. <clears throat> Entitlement. It oh, bothers me so one. much. Yeah. Uh, I guess, and that's probably coming from. Uh, it's probably coming from my culture, from Black American mm. culture, right? Is um, you know the idea of being ungrateful and acting entitled would be like what? What'd you, what'd you say? You got to you, <laughs> you know you almost get slapped for it. You know, like eh, shut up. You know what I mean? You better be grateful, which is kind of toxic in reality. But um, the idea of you know entitled behavior playing out at the expense of other people really mm. triggers my sense of justice. Yeah. Um, Maybe it's too much Batman when I was a kid. I don't know. But it really triggers it for me. Uh, I don't like it. Um, I personally, when I see people suffer, but I see them suffering without any real benefit, like means. I don't, I don't see anything good coming from it. You're just mm-hmm. suffering because somebody else wants something. Um, I think that's pretty lame. Yeah. Uh, so that's usually what I find annoying is uh, behavior like that. And it's different for looking out for yourself. You know, you got to look out for yourself. You got to take care of yourself, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um but let's say, you know, um, this is just random and not realistic. But if you ran somebody off the road just so you can go to Taco Bell and they got in a car accident. And we all know if you drive, you know what a pain in the butt dealing with accident is. Even if you're A-OK and healthy, you still got to deal with insurance, transportation. All this stuff is just, an, it's like what a big energy and time sink for that person to go get their Taco Bell. <laughs> I just don't see the equivalent exchange there. I think it's pretty lame. Um, so... Yeah, I would think I'm in agreement with you yeah. and consider it. Yeah. It's a big one for me. Big one. Yeah. All right. I, I Is that it? I think that's it. That's it for us, huh? That's uh that's I mean, unless we want to do more. <laughs> no, that, that we're good. Yeah, we're good. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, the name of that game is called Where Should We Begin? Um, it's with Esther Perel. If you're not familiar with Esther Perel, she is a world famous relationship therapist. Um, and she is we have a lot of respect and love for her. Mm-hmm. Um, she has a podcast called Where Should We Begin? And she has another one called How Is Work? If you're not familiar with that, if you're interested in learning more about relationships in any capacity, any way you connect with people, strongly recommend listening. Uh, she does sessions with clients, records kind of what goes on, and mm-hmm. you can learn a lot. There's so much insight to be gained. Uh, Vaughn, is there anything else? That's it for us. So if you enjoy this game, you can buy it online, search it up online. It's easy to to see it online. Just type it in, Esther Pearl, where should we begin cards? That's it. All right. Cool, guys. So please like, rate, subscribe, comment, follow, all those things at Shift on Your Life. Uh, Thank you for watching and listening, and we appreciate you. Have a great day.